Manufacturing is the process of turning raw materials into finished products that we use every day. It involves a series of steps, machines and skilled workers, all working together to create something new and valuable. For example, let's look at how paper is made from wood. First, trees are cut and transported to a mill. The wood is chipped, pulped, and then pressed into thin sheets to become paper. Similarly, sugar is produced from sugar cane. The harvested cane is crushed to extract juice, which is then purified, boiled, and crystallized to form sugar. Steel is made from iron ore. The ore is mined, then heated in a blast furnace with coke and limestone, producing molten steel that is shaped into beams, sheets, and other products. Manufacturing is important because it adds value to raw materials, creates jobs, and supports the growth of other sectors. Factories employ millions of people, from engineers to machine operators. It also modernizes agriculture by providing tools, machinery and fertilizers, helping farmers increase their productivity and income. By setting up industries in less developed areas, manufacturing helps reduce poverty and regional imbalance, bringing economic growth to more people. Exporting manufactured goods earns valuable foreign exchange for the country, which can be used to buy technology, oil and other essentials from abroad. Countries that transform their raw materials into finished goods become more prosperous and competitive in the global market. Agriculture and industry are closely linked. For example, agro-based industries like sugar, textiles and food processing depend on farmers for raw materials, while farmers rely on industry for equipment and fertilizers. This interdependence helps both sectors grow and ensures a stable supply of food and industrial products for everyone. In today's globalized world, it's not enough to be self-sufficient. Our manufactured goods must meet international standards to compete in world markets. High-quality products help build a country's reputation and open up new markets around the world. Industries can be classified in several ways. By the type of raw material used, agro-based industries use agricultural products like cotton, jute, and sugarcane. Mineral-based industries use minerals like iron ore, coal, and bauxite. By their role, basic industries supply raw materials to other industries, like iron and steel. Consumer industries make goods for direct use, such as sugar, paper, and toothpaste. By investment size, small-scale industries have lower investment and often use simple technology, while large-scale industries have bigger investments and advanced machinery. By ownership, public sector industries are run by the government, private sector by individuals or companies, joint sector by both, and cooperative sector by groups of producers or workers. Finally, by the weight and bulk of products, heavy industries like iron and steel, and light industries like electronics and textiles. Understanding these classifications helps us see how diverse and important manufacturing industries are for a country's development. Industries can be classified in several ways, each helping us understand their role in the economy and society. Let's explore these classifications in detail. First, by raw materials. Industries are divided into agro-based and mineral-based, depending on what they use to make products. Agro-based industries use agricultural products like cotton, jute, and sugarcane. For example, the textile industry turns cotton into clothes, while sugar mills process sugarcane into sugar. These industries support millions of farmers and connect rural areas to the national economy. Mineral-based industries use minerals like iron ore, bauxite and limestone. Steel plants, cement factories and aluminium smelters are examples. These industries are vital for infrastructure and urban development, forming the backbone of industrial growth. Understanding these supply chains helps us see how raw materials move from farms or mines to factories and finally to consumers, creating jobs and value at every step. Next, by role. Basic industries supply raw materials to other industries. For example, the iron and steel industry provides steel for making cars, machines and buildings. Consumer industries, on the other hand, make goods for direct use like paper, toothpaste or sewing machines. These industries touch our daily lives and drive demand in the economy. By investment, industries are classified as small-scale or large-scale. Small-scale industries like handicrafts or local workshops require less capital and often use traditional skills. They are crucial for rural employment and entrepreneurship. Large-scale industries like automobile or steel plants need huge investments, advanced technology, and employ thousands. They drive exports and technological progress. By ownership, industries can be public, private, joint, or cooperative. Public sector companies like BL and Sale are run by the government, 
ensuring strategic control and public welfare. Private sector companies, such as Tata Steel or Bajaj Auto, are owned by individuals or corporations. They bring innovation, efficiency, and global competitiveness. Joint sector industries like Oil India Lutanid are run by both government and private partners, combining public oversight with private expertise. Cooperative sector industries are owned and managed by groups of producers or workers. For example, sugar cooperatives in Maharashtra empower farmers and share profits among members. These ownership patterns affect how industries are managed, who benefits, and how profits are distributed in society. Finally, by weight and bulk. Heavy industries like iron and steel use bulky raw materials and produce large, heavy products. They require massive infrastructure and energy. Light industries, such as electronics or garments, use lighter materials and produce smaller goods. They are often more flexible, less polluting, and can be set up in urban areas. The difference between heavy and light industries affects everything from job types to environmental impact. Heavy industries shape infrastructure, while light industries drive innovation and exports. Understanding these classifications helps us see how industries support each other, create jobs, and shape India's growth. Each type plays a unique role in building a strong, balanced economy. Agro-based industries are those that use agricultural products as their raw materials. Let's begin with textiles, one of India's oldest and most important industries. The journey starts with raw cotton picked from the fields, which is then cleaned and spun into yarn in spinning mills. Next, the yarn is woven or knitted into fabric. Traditional hand looms and modern power looms both play a role in this process. Historically, India was famous for its hand-spun and hand-woven textiles, but during colonial rule, British mill-made cloth flooded the market, causing Indian industries to decline. After independence, the textile industry revived, especially in Gujarat, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu, thanks to access to raw cotton, skilled labor, and ports for export. Today, spinning is mostly centralized in these states, while weaving is decentralized, preserving traditional crafts like silk, zari, and embroidery. Hanspun Kadi became a symbol of self-reliance, championed by Mahatma Gandhi during the freedom movement. It still provides employment in rural areas. Now let's look at the jute industry. India is the world's largest producer of raw jute and jute goods, second only to Bangladesh in exports. Most jute mills are located along the Hooghly River in West Bengal, close to jute fields, water transport, and abundant labor. Kolkata provides banking, insurance, and port facilities, making it a hub for jute exports. The sugar industry is another major agro-based sector. India is the second largest producer of sugar and the top producer of Jua and Kansari. The industry is seasonal and works best as cooperatives. Most mills were in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, but have shifted to Maharashtra and southern states. This shift happened because sugarcane in these regions has higher sucrose content. The climate allows a longer crushing season, and cooperatives are more successful. Agro-based industries face challenges like outdated technology, competition, and fluctuating prices, but they also offer opportunities for rural employment, export growth, and innovation. In summary, agro-based industries connect India's farms to its factories, provide millions of jobs, and help drive the nation's economy forward. Mineral-based industries are those that use minerals and metals as raw materials. They are the backbone of India's industrial growth, supporting everything from construction to technology. Let's start with iron and steel. This industry is called the basic industry because all other industries, heavy, medium or light, depend on it for machinery and tools. The main raw materials are iron ore, coal and limestone, used in the ratio of 4, 2, 1. Steel is essential for construction, defense, engineering goods, medical equipment and consumer products. Most steel plants are located in the Chota Nagpur Plateau, where raw materials are abundant, labor is available, and transport is efficient. Next is aluminium. Aluminium is light, corrosion resistant, and strong when mixed with other metals. It is used in aircraft, utensils, wires, and packaging. The main raw material is bauxite, and smelting requires a lot of cheap electricity. Aluminium plants are mainly found in Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra, and Tamil Nadu. These locations are chosen for their bauxite deposits and access to hydroelectric power. Now let's look at the chemical industry. It is divided into inorganic and organic chemicals. Inorganic chemicals like sulfuric acid, soda ash and caustic soda are used for fertilizers, plastics, dyes and paper. 
Organic chemicals, such as petrochemicals, are used in synthetic fibers, rubber, plastics, medicines, and detergents. These industries are often located near oil refineries and petrochemical plants for easy access to raw materials. The fertilizer industry is vital for Indian agriculture. It produces urea, phosphates, and complex fertilizers, but potash is entirely imported. After the Green Revolution, fertilizer plants spread across Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, and Punjab, helping boost crop yields and food security. In summary, mineral-based industries provide the essential materials and chemicals that power India's factories, farms, and cities. They connect raw resources to finished products, driving progress and prosperity. After the Green Revolution, fertilizer plants spread rapidly across India, especially in Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, and Punjab. These plants use natural gas, naphtha, or even coal to produce urea, phosphates, and other fertilizers essential for modern agriculture. The proximity to raw materials, water, and transport routes made these states ideal hubs for fertilizer production, supporting the nation's food security. Cement is the backbone of construction, used in roads, bridges, houses, factories, and dams. The production process involves crushing limestone, mixing it with silica, gypsum, and coal, and heating it in large rotary kilns. India's cement plants are mainly located near limestone quarries and coal fields, with major clusters in Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Tamil Nadu. This strategic placement reduces transport costs and ensures a steady supply of raw materials. The automobile industry in India manufactures cars, trucks, buses, and two-wheelers. The process starts with steel and aluminum sheets, which are stamped, welded, painted, and assembled into vehicles on automated lines. Major hubs like Delhi, Gurugram, Pune, Chennai, and Bengaluru offer skilled labor, suppliers, and access to ports. After liberalization in the 1990s, foreign investment and new technology transformed the industry, leading to modern models, increased competition, and a surge in demand. Today, India is one of the world's largest automobile producers. Electronics and IT have made India a global hub. Electronics manufacturing includes TVs, computers, mobile phones, telecom equipment, and radars. Factories in Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Pune, Chennai, and Noida assemble components, test circuits, and package finished products. The IT industry, centered in Bengaluru, the electronic capital, develops software, manages data centers, and provides services worldwide. These sectors generate millions of jobs, from engineers and designers to support staff, and have made India a leader in technology exports. These industries have transformed India's economy, but they also bring challenges. Industrial growth leads to pollution of air, water, land, and noise. Air pollution comes from gases like sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide, released by chemical factories, refineries, and power plants. Water pollution is caused by untreated waste from textile, chemical, and tanning industries, which release acids, dyes, and heavy metals into rivers. Land pollution results from solid waste, glass, and packaging, while noise pollution comes from machines, construction, and traffic. Real-world examples highlight the dangers. The Bhopal gas tragedy in 1984, caused by a toxic gas leak from a pesticide plant, led to thousands of deaths and long-term health problems. Hot water from thermal plants kills aquatic life, and nuclear waste can cause cancer and birth defects. These cases show why strict environmental regulations and safety measures are essential for sustainable industrial growth. To address these issues, industries are adopting cleaner technologies. Water can be reused, recycled, and treated before release. Factories install smokestacks, filters, and scrubbers to reduce air pollution. Machines are redesigned to lower noise, and green belts are planted to restore balance. Sustainable development means balancing economic growth with environmental care so that industries can thrive without harming nature. Industrial pollution affects air, water, land, and even the sounds around us. Each type has unique sources, pollutants, and consequences for people and the environment. Air pollution is mainly caused by factories burning fossil fuels, releasing gases like sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and carbon monoxide. These pollutants form smog, acid rain, and can trigger asthma, lung disease, and even cancer. The Bhopal gas tragedy in 1984, where methyl isocyanate leaked from a pesticide plant, remains one of the world's worst industrial disasters. Water pollution comes from chemical, textile, petroleum, and tanning industries. 
They discharge acids, dyes, detergents, and heavy metals like lead and mercury into rivers. Hot water from thermal plants kills aquatic life, while nuclear waste can cause cancer and birth defects. The Yamuna and Ganga rivers are examples of water bodies suffering from industrial pollution. Land pollution happens when factories dump solid waste like glass, plastics, and chemicals. These toxins make soil infertile, and when washed by rain, seep into the ground, contaminating groundwater. This affects crops and drinking water, harming both people and wildlife. Noise pollution is caused by heavy machinery, construction, generators, and drills. Constant loud noise leads to stress, high blood pressure, sleep problems, and even hearing loss. In cities like Mumbai and Delhi, noise levels often exceed safe limits. To reduce pollution, industries use advanced technologies. Air filters, electrostatic precipitators and scrubbers remove harmful gases and particles from emissions. Water treatment plants recycle and purify industrial wastewater before it enters rivers. Factories are also switching to cleaner fuels like natural gas and using quieter redesigned machines to reduce noise. Green belts, areas with dense trees, are planted around factories to absorb pollutants and restore balance. The Indian government enforces strict regulations. Industries must follow standards for emissions and waste. ISO 14001 certification is awarded to companies with strong environmental management systems. NTPC, India's largest power company, is a leader in this area, using ash recycling, water conservation, and real-time pollution monitoring. Sustainable development means growing industries while protecting the environment. This includes using renewable energy, recycling resources, and restoring damaged ecosystems. Before and after scenes show how polluted areas can be revived with the right efforts. For India's future, it is crucial that industries innovate, follow regulations, and work in harmony with nature. Only then can we ensure a healthy environment and a prosperous nation for generations to come. India's industries are like the engines of a powerful train, each sector working together to drive the nation forward. From steel and cement to software and electronics, every industry is linked, supplying materials, technology and jobs to one another. This network powers our economy, creates millions of jobs, and connects India to the global marketplace. Manufacturing transforms raw materials into valuable products, modernizing agriculture and supporting farmers. At the same time, industries earn foreign exchange, raise living standards, and help build prosperous cities. But to keep growing, India must overcome challenges, like outdated technology, global competition, and the need for skilled workers. The future depends on innovation, investment in new skills, and making our industries efficient and eco-friendly. By working together, every sector, agriculture, manufacturing, and services, can help India become a global leader, the journey is challenging, but with vision and effort, India's industries will continue to transform lives and shape the nation's destiny. Together, we can build a stronger, more prosperous, and globally respected India.